Hello, my beautiful girls. I am so, so excited that you are here. Today's video is so special to me. It has been highly requested and I'm finally, finally making it. If you are new, my name is Alexis. I am your feminine energy and inner work big sis. I am here to help you become your dream woman. So everyone who is watching live, thank you so much for being here with me. I will take all of your questions at the end and I'm very, very excited to talk with you. If you are new to learning about attachment styles, you are in the perfect place. If you're already familiar, you are also in the perfect place. I am going to teach you about how to discover what your attachment style is and then how you can heal it to become secure. So if you are new to learning about feminine energy and inner work, it is essential that you heal from the inside out so that you can glow, so that you can be happy and really flow in your feminine energy. So the first thing that I'm going to teach you guys is how to find out what your own attachment style is. I studied psychology in school and attachment theory was something that I was so curious about because I had an anxious attachment style myself. Most people in the world today have an insecure attachment style. There are three different types of insecure attachment styles and then there is what is called the secure attachment style. So there's four types total. Let's go ahead and jump into the first one. The first one is the one that we are here to heal in this video. It is the anxious attachment style. The anxious attachment style is when you feel that you have a fear of abandonment. It is when you fear your partner leaving you. It is when you do not feel safe in a relationship. Most people with an anxious attachment style feel very insecure, feel very nervous, feel very stressed. They do not feel safe and comfortable being in a relationship because they think that their partner is always going to leave them, always going to hurt them, or abandon them in some way. You will also notice that people with an anxious attachment style, they will usually be in unhealthy or abusive relationships. It is because they fear being alone. They want to depend on somebody so much, they want that closeness, that intimacy, and they do not want to be alone. They constantly want to be held. This is part of having unhealed trauma. This is a side effect. Where an anxious attachment style comes from is having hot and cold parents, growing up in an unstable environment, not really knowing what the household is going to be like, not knowing if you are going to be safe, not knowing if you are going to be able to express yourself emotionally. Having narcissistic parents, having unhealthy parents, can cause you to have an anxious attachment style. I also want to note that I used to have an anxious attachment style. That's why this video is so close to my heart. I know what it feels like to have that and I'm here with you. I now have a secure attachment style and it's because of the tips that I'm going to share with you in this video. It is completely possible for you to heal it. I know because I have done it. I grew up in an environment that was not safe. I did not have the healthiest home environment. There was a lot of narcissistic abuse, hot and cold parenting, and because of that, it led for me to have an anxious attachment style, and it showed up in unhealthy patterns in my relationship. My very first relationship, I felt extremely anxious, always thought my partner was cheating or leaving or trying to abandon me. That feeling made me want to go crazy and it is why I'm here to help you heal. I want to take away that feeling from you. That is not how you should feel in a relationship and yes, it is possible to heal. So like I said, it comes from having an unpredictable home environment, hot and cold parents, that you might feel anxious now. Another note too is the way that you grew up with your parents, whatever type of relationship you had with them, unconsciously you will try to recreate it with your partner. And it's a way to try to heal that parenting that you had. So let's say you had a parent who was also narcissistic and abusive, you will attract a partner similar to that into your life as a way to try to heal that relationship with your parent. It is so important to be aware of this so that you can recognize the patterns in your own life, heal and grow. So that is the anxious attachment style. Moving on to the avoidant attachment style. So the avoidant attachment style comes from a parent who was emotionally unavailable. And it also comes from having parents who were cold and distant, who couldn't give you the love and the nurturing that you needed. If you have an avoidant attachment style, you fear intimacy and you fear vulnerability. It scares you to think about getting close to a partner. It scares you to think about opening up and trusting someone with your deepest secrets to really see the raw, purest version of yourself. 
if you have an avoidant attachment style, you will probably be emotionally unavailable in most of your relationships. So that, that's the avoidant att attachment style. Don't want to spend too much time there because this video is focusing on how to heal the anxious attachment style. That's what I am an expert on. Moving on to the third type of insecure attachment style. It is called the fearful avoidant. Some people call it the disorganized attachment style. It is a combination of both the anxious and the avoidant attachment style. It is someone who deeply fears getting abandonment, but craves intimacy, craves vulnerability in the relationships so heavily. So you can see how it's a lose-lose situation. Scared to get close, but drastically craving that close connection with someone else. So. Someone who has the fearful avoidant attachment style, this comes from having a very traumatic childhood experience. Maybe parents who were abusive, parents who were neglectful. And people with a, oh, one more note that I wanna say about the avoidant attachment style. People with an avoidant attachment style believe that their needs will not be met. They believe that their partner cannot fulfill their needs and it comes from their parents never being able to fulfill their needs. I wanna make sure I did not forget to say that. Back to the fearful avoidant attachment style, it's that push and pull, never satisfied, constantly continuing to attract traumatic, toxic relationships, just like I said, as a way to heal that parenting experience. So my girls with an anxious attachment style, men, I don't wanna exclude you if you're watching this too, men, I'm talking to you also. If you have an anxious attachment style, 99% of the time you will attract a partner who is avoidant. We attract the partner that we need to be able to heal from. If you're anxious, you attract an avoidant partner. Do you see how this is a toxic match? The anxious is constantly craving that love, that vulnerability. They want to get so close to their partner. The avoidant partner wants to be as far away as possible, does not want to open their heart, does not want to be close. They fear vulnerability. It is such a toxic and negative match and it's a way because both of these partners are trying to heal each other by coming together. It is best for you to be with a partner who is secure. It is best for you to be secure yourself. I understand this is not always possible because the environment, the world that we live in, most people have an insecure attachment style. That is leading on to the fourth type of attachment style, the secure one. People with a secure attachment style, they feel safe in their relationships. They feel that they're able to open up, they feel that they're able to show and express love, they trust their partners, and they can be in the relationship in a very healthy way. They deal with breakups in a healthy way, they deal with pain and loss, they also deal with vulnerability and closeness in such a healthy way. It is because the way that they were raised was most likely in a stable home environment with healthy, healed, loving parents. I also want you to know, you do not have to have a healthy, loving home to have a secure attachment style. You can do the inner work, which I'm about to give you the steps to do, to heal yourself and become secure. So another point about the anxious attachment style. Someone with an anxious attachment style is going to constantly be out of their feminine energy. My feminine energy girls, you know I'm always going to be talking about this with you. Healing is essential to be in your feminine energy. If you are anxious, you are going to try to control your partner because you fear losing them. It's like you are holding on so tight that the second you let go, your partner wants to run. When you are controlling, when you are in your masculine energy, you are not in a state of flow. You are not able to be in your divine feminine energy, which means you cannot create, you cannot be in abundance, you cannot feel your best. The better you feel, the better life you get to create and attract for yourself. In my psychology class in college, we watched this video once about the different way that babies experience trauma in the form of their caregivers giving them love and attention. I'm going to try to link this video in the description if you're watching this on YouTube so that you can see how the smallest acts in our childhood can give us wounds that we carry later into adulthood. So even if you really needed to be held or hugged by your parent, they weren't around to give that to you or maybe they set you down to sit at a moment that you really needed to be held, that can cause you to have attachment styles that are insecure. So it's not your fault how this happened, it is your responsibility to now heal so that you can be the most secure. I promise you it feels so much better being in a relationship when you have the ability to be secure in yourself. 
how to heal too. There's always so many deeper wounds to heal from. My course, Becoming Your Dream Woman, Feminine Energy Master Course, is on my website at thefeminineglow.com. I have more in-depth inner work tools there. I didn't want to forget to remind you before the price goes up. It's on sale right now before Valentine's Day. So if you want deeper inner work tools there, go and check out the course. Now, the steps for how you can heal your anxious attachment style. These three things that I'm about to share with you, I did these. I still continue to do them. They have caused me to be so secure in my relationships. Number one, it is a breathing exercise, and I'm going to do it with you right now so that you can actually begin to heal. So what you're going to do is place your hand over your heart, and you are going to breathe in and out. And you're going to use this exercise every time you get an intrusive thought. So maybe your partner's not texting you back, you think they're out cheating on you, or you can't get a hold of your partner, you think they want to break up with you, do this exercise. Your hand over your heart, you breathe in and out. The very first thing that you're going to say, body, I understand you are sending these thoughts to my head as a way to protect me. Part of me that is feeling anxious and scared right now, I love you and I recognize you. Keep breathing in and out. What you're going to say next is, body, thank you for trying to keep me safe. After that, you are going to say, part of me that is feeling anxious, I love you and I see you. However long you need to sit there, breathe, remind yourself, this exercise, the power of it is so healing. The way that our bodies work is when you have an anxious attachment style, you think that by envisioning it, by preparing the worst case scenario, your body can try to live out those painful emotions now, get it over with, as a protective mechanism experiencing the pain now, just getting it over with. Our body wants to do that so that we can protect ourselves. It's how we're built when we have an anxious attachment style. You are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not reality. This breathing exercise is going to help you understand that. I also want you to know that after you do this exercise, something that might be helpful is to give yourself affirmations such as, I am safe, it is safe for me to trust my partner and I will be okay. This breathing exercise, even if you slightly feel anxious, hand over your heart, breathe, remind yourself, body, I know that you're just trying to protect me. Thank you for sending me this thought, but I don't need the thought. My thoughts are not reality. That's all that you're going to do. I love this exercise. I still use it. Some anxious thoughts will still come up and it is so helpful. Moving on to step number two. Knowledge equals power. Become an expert on the anxious attachment style. I give this advice to all of my clients that I work with, and I tell them the more that you can understand how your trauma works, how your trauma shows up in your body, the better you can overcome it. Reading the book called Attached. Attached is one of my top books of all time. And also, if you join my Master Your Feminine Energy course, you get my whole exclusive book list. So I had to throw that in there too. Reading Attached changed my life. Attached is a book and it's by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. And they teach you all about attachment styles, where they come from, why they show up in our life, how our body stores onto the trauma, and it shows up in relationships and thought patterns later. When I learned and was able to relate to attachment style, expectations and things that this book was talking about, it just opened my eyes. It was like a light bulb moment. I saw, oh, it's only normal for me to think my partner is cheating on me because I have an anxious attachment style, because I grew up in this home environment and I have the fear of getting abandoned. Oh, that's not reality. It's just a result of the trauma. When you can recognize that, it gives me chills just to talk about your life has changed. Knowledge is power. Learn about the trauma. Learn you are separate from your thoughts and you will be able to heal. When you know how your attachment style works, you can separate your thoughts from reality. There's another book called Healing the or Healing Your Attachment Wound by Diane Heller. I've personally never read this book, but a lot of people have recommended it to me. I wanted to add that in there for you too. And someone else that really helped 
just educate me about the attachment style was this woman called so my mom's a therapist on tiktok if you're watching this on youtube i'll put her link to her tiktok page in the description she's actually the one who came up with that breathing exercise that i just shared with you and knowing all about attachment styles helped me heal it is so empowering to have knowledge your knowledge is power moving on to the third and the last step on how to heal your anxious attachment style also, you guys know I always drink my kombucha from that cute stemless wine glass. I broke it. <laughs> that was one of like five that I had. I have broken every single one. Those ones are so thin. So if you guys have any recommendations of good quality wine glasses that I can drink kombucha from, please share them with me because this mason jar is not going to work. <laughs> okay, so the last step to heal. Let yourself get abandoned. And I know this might sound very, very triggering, but my girls who have already started doing healing and inner work, you are going to be able to understand this. When you can let yourself get abandoned, you control the fear. The fear no longer controls you. This is very similar to exposure therapy. In exposure therapy, psychologists will expose people to the thing that triggers them, to whatever it is that traumatizes them. So for example, let's say someone is scared of spiders. When they have that fear that makes them sweat, that makes them anxious, psychologists will slowly expose them to the spider, and then once that person knows the spider will not kill them, the fear is removed. The way that our bodies work, we think that whatever our fear is, is going to kill us. And it's because our body gets stuck in thinking the way that we survive is by operating in the identity in the state that we always have been. Once you learn to step outside of that identity, once you learn to push the fear to the side and realize you can survive, your life will change. I believe the biggest help in healing my attachment style was getting abandoned. My very, very first breakup, the worst, my worst fear happened. And once I learned, wow, yes, this is painful, but I can survive this, the fear did not exist anymore. I opened myself up in a new way to get hurt because one, I realized the love is worth it. And two, that pain did not kill me. I'm still here. I'm still surviving. And I know I can heal through it. It actually makes you stronger. Another note that I had here is you might not even get abandoned, but when you decide I'm going to open myself up, I'm going to let myself get, get abandoned. I'm going to live in a state of flow. You are one living in your feminine energy. Feminine energy is about flowing, being present. And two, you are releasing control. Masculine energy wants to control. Our wounded feminine energy wants to control. We want to plan, we want to know exactly what's happening. Release control by allowing yourself to get abandoned if that even happens, it might not. We create our reality by attracting our beliefs. You have to change your beliefs if you want to change your reality. What's going to happen is a self-fulfilling prophecy what you believe you will attract. This is why people who always think, my partner's going to leave me, my partner is going to abandon me, they unconsciously push their partner away so that their belief comes true and then their partner ends up leaving them because they've pushed them away in the first place. If you take away anything from this video, please let it be this. You attract what you believe. There's a term known as confirmation bias. Don't have time to get into it in this video, but my course goes into it in a really great depth you attract what you believe. Change your beliefs to change your reality. My course has the deep inner work to understand and get to the roots of all of your trauma, all of your wounds, so that you can heal, so that you can level up and become your dream woman. And my course is available at thefeminineglow.com. It's also in the description. All of my girls who have signed up, I'm so, so excited. Make sure that you're a part of the private Facebook group so that we can talk and chat. Speaking of that, I am going to be taking some of your guys' questions now. Everyone who's on the live stream, hi, I'm so happy that you are here. Hi, Alexis, hi. Looking beautiful as always. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you, girl. Oh my gosh, Talia, it's been forever since I caught one of your lives. Talia, girl, where have you been? I've missed you. <laughs> I've been live streaming around 1.30 p.m. Fridays. Uh, Pacific Coast time. It has been so much fun. 
Sarai, what makeup do you use? I recently go non-toxic. We put so much toxins through makeup. Yes, Sarai girl, you know I love holistic natural health. I wish I could say I use all clean makeup, but I do not. But my foundation that I just got is Lady Gaga's line. It's called House, House Labs, I think, and it is a clean makeup beauty brand. Love that. It's literally skincare products in her makeup. I use a lot of NARS, I use um, Benefit, I use Maybelline, I use L'Oreal. I really, really love NARS. NARS is one of my favorite brands, but I'm trying to switch to clean beauty too. I understand the struggle, girl. <gasps> Sumaya! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Sumaya, I was just thinking of you today, girl. Guys, Sumaya is one of my beautiful, beautiful feminine energy coaching clients. Sumaya, hey my love, good to see you. It is so good to see you. I'm sending love to you and your daughter and your husband. I miss you. Let's see. Re, you literally changed my life. I love you so much. Re, thank you, girl. I'm so, so happy to be with you. Ooh, okay, good question. So Ali says, how can you heal your attachment style if you're in a relationship? So, so good. Somebody actually asked me on TikTok, is it better to heal when you're single or in a relationship? My answer is when you're in a relationship because how else are you going to be triggered to recognize what you need to heal from? When you are in a relationship, try to see what the dynamic is like. Are you leaning towards your partner more? Are you more anxious? Are you wanting to be more close to them? Look at the way that you two fight. When you're in a relationship, who is the one that wants to run away versus who, who is the one that wants to draw close? The first step is recognizing what your attachment style is. If you wanna run away, you're most likely avoidant. If you wanna stay close, you're probably anxious. Once you know your attachment style, take the steps that I've given you to do the work to heal and simply use your partner as a way to practice. If you have a healthy, trustworthy relationship, the better that is. You want a partner who is more secure in themselves, but I understand that's not always possible. Do what you can to observe the relationship dynamic and practice healing. Practice the breathing exercise. Educate yourself about your attachment style. See if your partner is willing to educate themselves as well, and you two can grow together. The more inner work that you do, that is why I put so much inner work in my course. The more inner work that you do, the better, more secure partner you will attract. And it doesn't mean a new partner, it means more security and confidence in whoever your partner is. So even if you're in a relationship, you two can grow and level up together by doing your inner work. Yes. Oh my gosh. Such a good point. I believe when you two are apart and he goes out with his friends in general, you practice these tips. Yes. If you have an anxious attachment style, I know this so well. Your partner going out with your friends is like the scariest thing in the world. It's because they're away from you. Who knows what they're doing? That is not normal to be anxious. And that was a huge wake up call for me. So such a good point. Practice the breathing exercise. Remind yourself, my thoughts are not reality. My thoughts only appear to keep me safe. So excited for your course. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you guys. So what can I do when I'm jealous of someone close to me? Mm. Use that jealousy as a mirror to understand what you desire. What you are jealous of, it doesn't have anything to do with the other person. It has to do with yourself. It is a deep rooted desire that you have that you might not feel worthy of having. When jealousy or envy shows up, Get excited about it. Tell yourself, oh wow, this is something that I get to have. Maybe you're jealous that someone has a huge amount of money coming in monthly. Maybe they have such an abundance of wealth in their life and you feel jealous of it. When you notice the jealousy, look at it and say, wow, I'm so excited. This jealousy is stirring up inside of me. I'm going to channel it into excitement. I now understand I have a desire to be wealthy myself and I get to have it because my desires are available for me. Whatever that desire is, change the energy to go from negative to positive. Don't be jealous, don't be envious, instead be excited and allow yourself to realize you get to have it. Great question. 
Nia, what do we do for the constant anxious stomach hurting and not being able to eat? So Nia, great question girl. So I understand that you you might want some more work besides these tips. What I recommend for you girl is working with a therapist or resorting to journaling. So healing and self-growth, it takes time. Maybe you need to work with a therapist one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe you want to do hypnotherapy. I've done hypnotherapy myself and I love it. You have to kind of experiment and figure out what is your best resource to help you. There's lots of podcasts and books to learn and grow. Free information is always available online. That is how I personally grew. I don't think I even began therapy before I had healed my attachment style wound. So I would go to resources online or invest in a resource that you, that can help you better. So no, I'm not posting this video until Monday if you're watching live on TikTok right now. I need some time. Ooh, seven. What is one of the best ways to comfort someone who hasn't had the best day? This is such a great question and I can't answer it exact for you because you have to know the person that you are comforting. Some people need space. Personally for me, I need space. I need to be alone. If people, if a lot of people are around me trying to talk to me, hug me, that's not going to work for me. I like peace, solitude, being alone and then I can be comforted that way. Try to ask the person that has had a bad day, what would make you feel better or is there anything that you need from me right now? Let them know you are happy to help, you are there for them, and try your best. Use your emotional intelligence to look at their body language. Are they opening up to you? Maybe they want a hug, maybe they want to talk to you. Or are they closed off? Maybe they need some space. Oh, Talia, you just got the Lady Gaga foundation too? Yes, it is so good. It literally looks like skin. I'm wearing it right now and I love it. Should you, so Alina, should you look for a partner who motivates and challenges you or should you do that on your own? Alina, great question, girl. My answer for you is you do it on your own and a natural result of that is that you will attract a partner who is also doing that for you. So let's say you are very motivated yourself. You take care of yourself. You have discipline, lots of self-love. You will attract a partner who also has those qualities. We attract what we are. And even if you are with someone right now who doesn't have that quality, the more you do your inner work, the more you pull them up and upgrade them with you. So you motivate yourself, they become excited about it because your vibration is getting higher. And then they start doing that as well. Check in the time real quick. Oh, okay, I see a good question. Lydia, how can I know what my ideal self or reality looks like? Lydia, use Pinterest, girl. Go on Pinterest, start looking at food, styles, um, traveling inspiration, lifestyles, homes, anything that you desire that your body feels excited looking at, you desire it and that is your ideal self. Excuse me. So I would make a vision board, anything that stands out to you. Let me try to think of some examples. So for myself, bright, healthy, colorful foods. Um, lots of healthy fruits and vegetables, those stand out to me. I feel so excited looking at them because I know when I eat those myself, I feel so good. Because I feel so good when I eat those, when I feel so good looking at those pictures of that healthy lifestyle, I know that aligns with my ideal self. So whatever makes your body feel excited and alive just by doing or by looking at, especially on an app like Pinterest, that aligns with your ideal self. Oh, you guys are asking so many good questions. I just want to stay on here with you all day. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to take two more questions and then I've got to go. My boyfriend challenges me, but it's hard to stay in my feminine with all of his judgment. Is this normal? So Chaz, if you feel a lot of judgment from your boyfriend, I want you to pause, lean back and think, is there anyone in my life that I am judging? People are our own mirrors. So the traits that you see appearing in other people, look at those and say, is this an area in my life that I am also projecting? If you feel that you are being judged, sometimes it can mean that you are judging others. But if you notice this and you notice this is not feeling good for my body, maybe it is God trying to point you towards a different direction. Maybe there is a discussion that needs to be had in your relationship about openness and embracing authenticity, embracing each other in a healthy, loving space. Maybe you need that conversation with your partner. 
How do you always speak with a smile? Because I talk about what I love. <laughs> that is how I do it. Okay, one more question, guys. Please answer my question. I'm sorry, guys. There's a lot of questions coming in. It's hard to find them. Oh, okay, this is a great question. How to do inner work? This answer, the way that you do inner work, I'm gonna put a simple answer. The way that you do inner work is using your triggers and life experiences as a way to point you to something deeper within. Whatever is bothering you, whatever makes you mad or sad, whatever shows up as a wound, it hurts your body to think about or to experience, go deeper in there. There is something trying to be revealed to you. You can find prompts online to journal from. I recommend doing shadow work, really going deep and going back to your childhood, going back to any moment that you lived through that caused you to experience trauma, that caused you to be wounded. Inner work is really just doing work for your soul, work to heal and grow, to really discover who you are, learning your flaws, learning your weaknesses, and also embracing your gifts and all the abundance that you have, everything that you love about yourself. That is how you do inner work. It's really just knowing who you are and always creating that ideal self, that ideal lifestyle. My course, Master Your Feminine Energy, has so much inner work. This course is all about becoming your dream woman, healing, growing, becoming the best, most feminine version of yourself. Inner work, I might have to make a YouTube video just on inner work because I love talking about it. There's so much to it. You are here right now watching this video. You are healing, you are growing, you are expanding your mind. You are doing inner work. Continue to use everything that's going on in your life as a reflection of yourself, as a pinpoint to think, I'm gonna go deep, where is this coming from? It's being curious and excited to know who you are. Everyone who has been on this live stream and who has watched or who has asked great questions, who is watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for being here. I'm so, so grateful for you. I'm so happy to have you. I will be back next Friday with a new live stream and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.